Let's talk about the tax cuts, the possible government shutdown, and the state of the U.S. economy. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin joins us tonight from the Treasury Department. Mr. Secretary, thanks for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be on the show with you. You know, this obviously is a big day for you. The president was in his element there at the White House. Your thoughts that this is now at the president's desk? Well, Brad, I think it's really historic. Uh, people said we couldn't get it done, and we did get it done. It's a great day for the American public. We fixed a broken tax system. We've delivered on big tax cuts for both individuals and business, and this is all about creating jobs. So I think this is going to be an enormous impact on the U.S. economy. Do you know when he'll sign it? Um, I, I think we're just working out some of the logistics on that. Uh, I think the important issue is it passed today and he'll sign it as quickly as he can. So will most of it take effect at the beginning of January? For somebody sitting at home, you know, how does this play out as far as their effect? It will. Virtually all the aspects of it will start on January 1. Um, and the really important issue is we've already started working with the IRS and we're working on the withholding tables. So we expect the American public will see tax cuts in their February paychecks. And that's something we're going to work around the clock through the holidays to make sure we get done. You know, this president has spent a lot of time talking about the economy, and oftentimes he re refers to the markets. Uh, the markets today didn't seem to jump for joy about this. I mean, there's a lot of factors with the markets always. Here's the president in the cabinet meeting earlier. I heard a couple of our folks, Steve and Gary, and a few others uh, this morning, and they're thinking that the market hasn't fully digested what they've got here. I, I don't think the market's even begun to realize how good these are, like, for instance, full expensing and other things. So is, is he right? And should you judge this on the market's response? Well, Brian, I mean, if, if you look at where the market is this year since the president's been elected, I mean, it's just an incredible rise. And I think that's that has been an anticipation that we would get this done, that we'd get regulatory reform done, and, and the president's delivered on this. So I think it's a great investment opportunity in the U.S. I think this is about bringing trillions of dollars back on shore that will be invested. You already saw AT&T make a big announcement today about uh, bonuses and, and, and more investment. I think we're going to see a lot more coming from other companies. Yeah, you know, critics of this point to corporations and they say that it'll just be used back to buy back stocks and raise corporate salaries. You point to the AT&T announcement that the president mentioned. Uh, the FedEx CFO, Alan uh, Graff, said last night on a conference call, quote, U.S. GDP could increase materially next year as a result of U.S. tax reform. Is If this occurs, we would likely increase capital expenditures and hiring to accommodate the additional volumes triggered from this incremental GDP growth. So so is that what you're seeing from most companies, or is he just kind of sugarcoating things? No, no, I think that's exactly what you're seeing. And we've had a broken tax system. We had a worldwide tax system that encouraged our companies to leave their money offshore, to create jobs offshore. And we fixed that. We've created a territorial system. We've created the right incentives to invest capital here, to have jobs here. And we expect not only will people see tax cuts, but people will see wage increases. So this is this is all about getting the economy going again. I think, as you know, the president has repeatedly said we think we can get to sustained GDP of 3 percent or higher, and that will create very, very large economic growth. That's that's trillions of dollars in additional revenue for the U.S. government. You know, you didn't have a single Dem Democrat vote for this, uh, and they were out talking about you, sir, uh, earlier today. Let me go back to Mnuchin. I just think his statement oh, yeah. is just so Mnuchin. I mean, what are we talking about? Billionaires here. He just seems to. He Mnuchin said, seems to make it up as he goes GOP along. GOP won't cut taxes for the rich. Yeah. They handled the. They handed the top wealthiest one percent, eighty-three percent of the benefits. Your thoughts on all that? I don't know where, first of all, I don't know where they get these numbers from, and I don't make it up. As we've said, we have lots of people here at Treasury that have been working on numbers. They fundamentally disagree with us, and I guess that's why they, they voted against this. They don't believe that we can get the growth that we think we can. They don't believe in the American economy. They say they want to do things that are good for workers, but they voted against the bill. And we've been saying the number one impact is to make America competitive again, to fix the business tax system, 
deliver tax cuts for the middle income. Um, this is not about tax cuts for billionaires. This is about tax cuts for working families, for people with kids, the child tax credits. And, uh, you know, I think you're going to see this in the polls as people get paychecks. They're tired of listening to the Democrats complain about this. Yeah. Here's one element. This is candidate Donald Trump talking about one specific element that he was campaigning on. As part of this reform, we will eliminate the carried interest deduction, well-known deduction, and other special interest loopholes that have been so good for Wall Street investors and for people like me, but unfair to American workers. The hedge fund guys won't like me as much as they like me right now. I know them all, but they'll pay more. I know people that are making a tremendous amount of money and paying virtually no tax, and I think it's unfair. So the carried interest loophole is still in. Um, why, why did that stick in there? Well, Brett, as, as you know, the president did want to get rid of that. That's something he's been talking about with us all along. He spoke to me about it uh, many, many times, as recent as this week. And I think at the end of the day, this is a great bill. It's a terrific bill. You know, that doesn't mean that every single little aspect in this deal is exactly as, as the president wanted it or as exactly as yeah, certain sure. members in the House and Senate. Th this was about compromise. But let me just put this in perspective. The carried interest is a very small small revenue impact. It is something that impacts one group and the president wanted to get rid of it. But uh, the president thinks this is a great bill and is going to be great for American workers and for working families. Right. And there is negotiation in every big piece of legislation. But who specifically on Capitol Hill was fighting for hedge fund guys? private equity folks. Brad, I'm not going to comment and say specific names. You know, this was a very collaborative process between the House and the Senate. I think, as you know, a lot of things changed in conference. It actually became a better bill in conference. And uh, we couldn't be happier with the team effort across the administration, the Treasury, the, the, the Senate, and the House. So th this is a big win for the president and for the American public. Two more quick things. Do you have assurances that the government is not going to shut down and you'll have a short-term um, kind of continuing resolution into mid-January? Um, I, I think it's highly unlikely that there's a government shutdown, but I, I don't want to give that assurance until it's passed by Congress and it gets to the president. I can tell you the president doesn't want to shut down. And, uh, you know, I, I think that the right thing to do is let's get a short-term funding and we'll deal with these issues in January. So the, the budget has $700 billion uh, for increasing the U.S. military, investing in, in, in that sort of thing. Is there, an, is there assurance that these sequesters are going to be cut? I mean, these are the battles, really, even if you punt to January, that are going to have to take place uh, in earnest, right? Well, you're right. And, and these are difficult discussions and they're going on. You know, we had a cabinet meeting today. The president made it very clear and Secretary Mattis gave a presentation to us on the military. It's a big priority. We've got to make sure that Americans are protected. Uh, the president wants our allies to begin to reimburse us for various different costs. But th this is a priority of the president's to make sure our military has the resources to meet our needs and protect the American people. Well, Mr. Secretary, we appreciate your time on this uh, historic day for your administration. I'm to, I know tomorrow's your birthday, so I guess this is a good birthday present. Thank you very much. It's always great to be with you.